Have you ever seen a more pathetic raised bed? I had planned on replacing this raised bed today, but my plans have changed. We've got good weather to do it. I've got plenty of homemade compost to top it off if I did replace it. But Wendy asked me to hold off until later in the summer. Lately, she's been harvesting this Swiss chard for breakfast. To replace this raised bed the right way, I'd be digging all of this out and probably feeding that Swiss chard to our chickens. So it's good to be a little flexible with projects around here. I've been meaning to replace this raised bed for a couple years, so waiting another month or two isn't going to kill me. Instead, let's take a look at our dough pin. Goats and trees are not a good combination. Eventually, the goats are going to win. This weirdly leaning tree has been stripped of all of its lower leaves. Hey goats, who wants a snack? Goats. You're a good goat. Sienna. Stormtrooper. Hello, Bonnie. I don't know what's keeping these trees alive. Look at how the goats have eaten away the bark. This is just ridiculous. It's kind of too bad. These are cherry trees and have beautiful springtime blossoms. But our plan has been to get rid of them. Their branches scrape against the house and Encourage a little too much moss growth on the roof. Plus, it's not a bad idea to get rid of trees that are close to the house because they might be a fire danger. Wendy has seeded the goat pen out here. So our little monsters here can have something a little more intentional to graze on. They will graze out in the front yard where our electric fence allows them to get to. But generally speaking, goats are goats. They prefer to eat right about knee height, I'd say. I'll cut those trees down when our goats finally do kill them off for good. 
We still feed them hay and grain, but we have been experimenting with what we feed our goats. For some reason, the does are a little less picky than the bucks are. Valkyrie actually really likes weeds. Often when I put them in the feeder, if one goat comes over to eat, others will as well. They just don't like to feel like they're missing out. The other day I put trimmings from a hedge in their feeder and they munched it down pretty well. And it's a good thing too. There's plenty more where that came from. Not having that raised bed project isn't really a problem. This time of year, I can always find things that need doing out here. I think I'll pick some weeds for the chickens. Mow the yard. and do a little chipping and shredding. It looks like the does have finished with these branches. They'll be added to the pile over by our compost bin. Those plywood scrap pieces propped up against my wheelbarrow worked pretty well as a screen. A relatively small amount of bark chips got past them.
Everybody stay inside. Everybody wait your turn. Bunch of lucky goats. Shenanigan, are you around? I'm doing very well today, thank you. Well, I just wanted to say hey and actually this video is a little bit on the short side. So I thought I'd ask you what you thought of the content this time. It's interesting that the boy goats are more particular about what they'll eat. Is that gender difference true for all goats? I don't know. Maybe some of our viewers out there who also have goats can comment on this. I'm thinking it's probably just a matter of not all goats being the same. It might not be a gender difference at all. Like people, you should probably just get to know what your goats want and need on an individual basis. Shenanigan, tell me, what was your very favorite part of this video? I liked watching the bunny in his rabbit tractor cage while you were working. He's so cute. I'll put in another clip of that at the end of this video, just because you liked it, Shenanigan. You know, I had a strange dream the other night, and you were in it. Well, Brian, just look at me. I should be the girl of your dreams. It wasn't like that. I want to say the dream felt more real, but that's not quite the right word. It wasn't realistic. I'm thinking maybe, maybe it was just more vivid. It didn't seem like my dream. I wanted to ask Shenanigan if it's somehow possible that I was sharing one of your dreams? It is possible, and if it's true, it's pretty cool. I didn't think you were compatible enough with fairy folk to participate in our dream life. Tell me about your dream, because I'll remember if what you saw was something that I did. Human minds are designed almost to mostly forget our dreams and relatively quickly. But for some reason, this one stuck with me. That's one of the saddest things I've ever heard. A fairy's dream life can be more significant and substantial than our waking existence. I don't remember all of it, just the dramatic parts. I was watching people in a series of rooms. In room after room, the roof and walls broke away and the people were terrified to suddenly find themselves gliding down on the floors of those rooms into a deep canyon below. The canyon wasn't as monumental or stark as the Grand Canyon is. It looked to me more like Zion National Park. If you've ever been there and you've climbed the Angel's Landing Trail, it's a pretty high vantage point. That's kind of what it looked like looking down into this canyon. There were lush green trees down below. It was at the end of the dream that I saw you, Shenanigan. Shenanigan gleefully jumped into the last room. And at this point, I realized I was seeing through, through your eyes, as the floor broke away and you wrote it down too. I specifically remember you saying, my turn, my turn. This is wonderful. It was a dream I had. Being able to participate in dream life opens up so many possibilities, Brian. Your human brain did 
reinterpret some things, but enough of it was still there that I'm convinced that you did eavesdrop on one of my dreams. They weren't rooms or other people, and it wasn't Zion National Park. We were right here in the ravine. I was up in the trees, chopping down leaves that had little bugs on them. I wanted to vicariously experience their roller coaster rush before I just had to try it myself. I did say, my turn, my turn. How could that even be possible? How can we share the same dream at the same time? The more time we spend together, Brian, the more your REM brainwaves or whatever must be conforming themselves to my patterns. Basically, our fairy bonding is taking deeper root. That's incredible. I don't know where all of this is heading, folks, but stay tuned so I can keep sharing it with you. Here's that last bunny clip.